I just wonder if you've kind of given up the ghost on this. Is the government going to shut down this weekend? Well, the government should not shut down. That would be an exceptionally stupid thing for us to do. But listen, things look <laughs> a little bleak. I'm not going to try to put uh, too, too uh, smiley a face on it, but I'm not giving up. We still have time. Cooler heads need to prevail. Let's get our work done. Are we going to see a continuing resolution in the House today or when? Uh, I expect that tomorrow we will vote on a continuing resolution. It is something that I authored along with five of my colleagues, uh, generally conservatives, uh, three members of the Freedom Caucus and three members, including myself, of the conservative Main Street Caucus. It would mm -hmm. uh, be it would be a, sta a stopgap funding measure for another 30 days. At the same time, though, it would secure the border with policies that we know work. Your role on uh, the Republican Main Street Caucus as chair is vital here. There are a lot of folks waiting for the noise to die down so the center uh, can come to the rescue here. Uh, I wonder your view on that and what your message is for those members holding things up like Matt Gates, who we just heard from. I do think Matt's involvement, uh, particularly regarding a stopgap funding measure, is, listen, it's been really problematic. It's not been helpful. No one, including Matt Gates, thinks that we're going to get all of our work done in the House and in the Senate by the day after tomorrow, and then magically under that same timeline be able to meet with a Senate who wants to spend, in general, more money, and a House that, in general, including me, wants to spend a lot less money. It's going to take some time to work that out. So the only question is whether or not we will do that work while federal employees continue to get paid and while federal taxpayers continue to be able to access services at the IRS and Indian Health and the federal and the Farm Service Agency and others, or whether or not we will demand that those agencies shut down while we continue our work. Uh, listen, I'm, I think shutdowns are stupid. Once it happens, we could be looking at a weekend, a blip on the radar. Some, including Goldman Sachs, are saying two to three weeks. Congressman, I'm sure you don't want to go there because you're holding out hope for a solution. But but what should people be bracing for here? Uh, this looks like a full shutdown, not a partial one. And it could take some time if it actually happens to reopen. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the partial versus full shutdown, because I do think that really matters. The shutdown during yep. 2018 and in 2019 was a partial shutdown. Sometimes, some, sometimes people will say, as they're beating their chest, shut it all down. You know, government doesn't really do any, <laughs> anything anyway. Shut it all down. And I would yeah. just tell you that if this thing goes on for two weeks, you're going to have uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, who will have worked during that time, and then we're going to refuse to pay them. Uh, we will have TSA agents who will be reporting to duty, even though they're not getting paid. We are going to have these frontline men and women keeping us safe who will be absolutely let down by their government. And anybody who wants to be cavalier about that, anybody want, who wanna act like, act like that doesn't matter, the government doesn't add any value in anybody's life, they are playing games. I have a constitutional duty to get my work done. All of my colleagues do too. I wish they mm -hmm. took that constitutional duty as seriously as I think they should. That said, I'd like to talk to you about some of the sticking points here, including funding for Ukraine. Interesting to see members vote on an amendment to remove Ukraine aid from the defense spending bill yesterday. Uh, most Republicans supported leaving that in. And I wonder your thoughts on this and if the leadership is at odds with the rank and file on helping to fund the war effort in Ukraine. You're right, insofar as a majority of Republicans and a majority of Democrats continue to be supportive in both chambers of uh, mm -hmm. of helping Ukraine, making sure that not that American men and women die on Ukrainian battlefields, but that the Ukrainians have the ammunition and the supplies they need to hold the line against this illegal invasion by Vladimir Putin. I just to me, it's a little hard to imagine the party of Ronald Reagan uh, no longer interested in pushing back against communism and tyranny and uh, dictatorships. We, uh, Ukraine is trying to hold the line. We should continue to help them. Now, that doesn't mean there should be blank checks. We do need yep. additional accountability, but a majority of the House and the Senate are supportive of that. But this gets back to the, all these red lines everybody's got. Nobody mm -hmm. ever gets everything they want in a negotiation. So when you have people who say Republicans or Democrats, need to hold out until they get every single thing they demand. 
That is a profoundly unserious person. That's a person who has never apparently actually uh, had a successful marriage or business or been on a nonprofit board. Nobody gets everything they want ever. There's some give and take. And so maybe the Ukrainian package might not look exactly like I would design it. Maybe a, a stopgap funding measure might not look exactly like I would design it. But we have got to stop letting perfect be the enemy of the good.